they were, but not Mackie and Judd. Write this down. This is the big leagues, where we own our terrible predictions. Write that down. And keep track of each other's batting averages. It's Write That Down. Write it down. You like writing things down. With Mackie and Judd. Yeah. That's right. We're the only show in America that has the cojones, the grapefruits enough to actually keep track of our predictions. I feel like most people that talk about sports for a living just live in fear of being wrong. Oh, my God. They're like umpires. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. No, They're we Joe don't want West. any accountability. Yeah, Angel Hernandez. We don't want We don't yeah. want the electronic strike zone. We don't want to know how wrong we were. <laughs> no. oh, we don't want to get no. let go. Listen, we lean in to being wrong <laughs> on this show. All right, that's how this works here. And write that down. Every single Wednesday on Mackie and Judd, and also on Purple Daily, we've expanded the brand, so to speak, in 2021. So here's how write that down works. Three predictions from everybody each week. They must be quantifiable. We keep track of batting averages and home runs. And if you want to be a guest listener predictor, like Jeff, formerly of Texas, now of Arkansas, is going to be on today's show, you can send a DM to me, at Phil Mackie, or at Dex's Tweets, on Twitter or even Instagram. We check our DMs on Instagram too. He's at the Dexter on Instagram. I'm uh, at Phil Mackey. Just hit us up and we can get you scheduled for some time this summer. So I want to give you guys a heads up that there were some bloodbathy things about the accountability session this week. And yeah. there was also a bomb. There was like a oh. 450 foot home run hit in write that down this oh, week. Oh, cool. Okay. All right. Just want to throw that out there. All right. Yeah. Um, I'm excited. So, all right. Let's dive into the accountability session here. Judd says right. he's excited. Not sure that's the emotion I would go with if I were Judd Zolgad here. Oh, boy. I, I'm due for a bad week. Oh, boy. Oh, boy. Judd Zolgad came in <laughs> flirting with a 500 batting average on the season. He is last year's reigning defending batting champion, home run champion, I believe, too. And he said Miguel Sano would hit the first home run of the regular season for the Minnesota Twins. Sorry, Judd. Oh, it's happen. okay. I was I was due for a three or a sure. one for four. Yeah, right. yeah. Just trying to ration, ra- just trying to rationalize. No, uh, you know this what? Away. Never too high, never too low. Never too high, never too low. It's always even keel. You very pessimistically said the Major League Baseball regular season will not start before May first, which is what the owners wanted. Darn it! Mm-hmm. And you said uh, this one took a couple of years to come off the board because they were both injured. But you said I'm Carl impressed. Anthony Towns and Joel Embiid will both be ejected from the next matchup with each other. They didn't These last two are callbacks of, of yeah. from way back when. Mm-hmm. And this one almost came off the board. This is this is, I believe, the oldest prediction on the books. And write that down. It's like five or six years old. Judd said Larry Brown will coach again. And uh, Larry Brown was flirting with an assistant job with was it Indiana or something? Yeah, with Mike Woodson and the Indiana Hoosiers. And what happened? I thought I actually thought it was like a done deal, and then it sounds like he's not going to coach. I don't know. I'd have to look it up, but yes, it would be. I think it is our oldest prediction. I think it goes okay. back to to essentially. It might be the second year. Write that down. So I do have a question. I'm just sort of perusing through Larry Brown's. Wikipedia page and still alive. I think we missed something. So you made this prediction after he left SMU in 2016. So this is a five year old prediction. Okay. There's a section of Larry Brown's Wikipedia page that says on June 12th, 2018, Larry Brown accepted the proposal of Auxilium Torino to become the new head coach of the Italian basketball, a basketball club of the Liga Basket Serie A. The LBA. Okay. Yeah. On June seventeenth, he officially became the new head coach of Torino of that year. He was fired mid-season after just oh, so twenty did. four games. So he's already been back. So I feel like we missed that. We and did. Judd Zolgad deserves a point for saying Larry Brown will coach again. I mean, yeah. we, you you didn't say I, I said he'll coach. No, I, no. You said coach again. You didn't. Yeah. You didn't say head coach. You didn't say America. No, nope. I said he'll coach anything. again. He'll be on a sideline at some point again. Yes, okay, okay. It's off the board. <laughs> it's so off the board. It's off the board. It's off the board three years ago. <laughs> okay, so I have a prediction on the board, and we'll get to mine here in a second. Right. I predicted recently that Larry Brown will perish before he coaches again, but that was after he got fired from the Italian job. So that's that one remains on the board. <laughs> Yours, yeah. yeah you, if you were. 
Yeah, so mine mine actually came off the board in 2018. Yep. So the batting average you'll see on the screen at the end of this exercise is not going to be updated because uh, I'm, yeah. I'm not talented enough to upgrade the graphic uh, update the graphics mm-hmm. uh, at live speed here. So I said Kyle Garlic will go yard in the Milwaukee series. Oh, he barely even played. I think he got a plate appearance. Yeah. What happened there? By the way, though, Brent Rooker just placed in the injured list that just came across. So what? You might get some playing time for Kyle Garlic. What's wrong with him? I don't. We don't know. Just he's on the injured list. Can Alex they recalled, Kirloff get a call they up for God's a, sake? Um, <laughs> yeah, can, yes, exactly. Yeah, yeah. I don't think we're uh, far enough. I think we need one more week to hot make take sure police. the service time. <laughs> Coming to get Phil. I can hear it in the background. <laughs> well, uh, the next one here was not a hot take because I said Byron Buxton will hit the first home run of the regular season for the Minnesota Twins. And boys, That's good. that is a round tripper. That's yep. my first round tripper of the year here. Yep. That's good. I'll write that down. If you. He went yad. All right. The listeners had a bunch of things come off the board here. We'll start with John, Ooh. who said the UND Fighting Hawks will win the national championship this year over Boston College. <laughs> Pretty tough. Neither one of those teams made it. Uh, Eric said Alex Kirloff and Brent Rooker will both be on the Twins opening day roster in 2021. <laughs> However, with help from. Some score north personalities turned listeners here. These are all now in the listener section of yeah. of because because we have four categories. We've got Mackie, Judd, Declan, and then everyone else goes into the listener category. So you guys can thank Doogie for saying D'Lo won't be back within four to six weeks. Really close. April second was the six week cutoff, and he came back like three days after that. So Ooh. Doogie's prediction yeah. was correct. Rami said two years ago, Cat and Embiid will not fight nor get ejected in their next meeting. Just that, that was response judge. to my prediction. <laughs> yeah, he came back at me and he was right. Uh, and then Manny said the Gophers hockey team will lose uh, will win at least one game in the NCAA hockey tournament in 2021. They did. Yeah. And I just want to update up? this one here. Josh said there will be three or more Dick Bramer gasms on Twins broadcast this year. We definitely had at least one. When Nelson Cruz hit a deep fly ball off of that position player that like backed the left fielder up to the warning track, and I'm pretty like there was at least one Bramergasm in that game. I think it might have been that at bat. So we're at one one Bramergasm on the season, and I'm taking a Bramergasm to mean like a full start, or is mm-hmm. he saying like any sort of Bramergasm, <laughs> like walk off you know, home yeah. run, et cetera? Yeah, yeah. No, there's a Bramer. Yeah. No, no, it's got to be a full. No, it's got to be a full start. You're saying it's got to be a full-on brand. It's got to be the full start and then not the home run, though. Because if it's a home run, he's cl- clearly go- going to exceed three easily. So it's got to be I- – I take it to mean when he gets really excited at a fly ball, which he tries not to do now, and then he has to pull it back. Oh, so you're, so you're saying the false start is what – the that's the Bramer gas. Yeah, yep. Because, yeah. like, if he do- – I mean, he's going to have them every time that they win a game – in in walk off fashion, yeah, for, for sure. sure, yeah. So, and there's probably go- going to be more than three of those by July. Yeah. So so he has one false start Bramergasm. On That's the what I so take far. Yeah. And he needs a couple more for Josh to pick up that prediction. All right. Rough week for Declan here. He said the Twins will win by three runs or less on opening day, and they had a three run lead thanks, in the Colin ninth a. of opening day. Yeah. Thanks, Alex. Appreciate that. And then they had a chance to win it in extras. You had so many chances there. Wow. You said Kenta Maeda will strike out at least six batters on opening day. He had five. And you said Brent Rooker will not be on, or I'm sorry, Brent Rooker will make the Twins opening day roster, but Alex Kirloff will not. Well, neither one of them made the Twins opening day roster. It's a little little 0 for 3 there Mm. for Declan. And these are the updated batting average. Judd's actually hitting 455 with one home run. Declan's at 353 with a home run. Listeners jump up to 258, no home runs. And I have a 238 batting average with one home run on the season. In terms of all time career stats, going back to 2018, Judd with a 154 hit uh, mark, which leads all of us in nine home runs. I'm at 117 hits and a league leading 11 home runs. Listeners, 96 hits, nine home runs. Declan, 43 hits and three home runs. All right. I'm the logo, write it down. baby. You like writing things down? <laughs> I'm the logo of Write That Down. Okay. What would the logo look like? If you're the logo, what what would the logo look like? Be writing. I'd be writing something down. I think you'd be drinking, probably. Yeah. Ah, that wasn't... Well, okay. 
It'd be like Judd on his fifth IPA, just like pointing <laughs> a finger at the <laughs> head, sort of tilted. Yeah. Oh man. All right, let's get our guy in here. Longtime uh, listener of the show and participant also on on Vikings Vent Line. He used to be Jeff in Texas for a long time. Now he's Jeff in Arkansas, and he's ready to take his swings and his at bats. Jeff, what's going on, man? Welcome to the show. Hey, thanks, guys. Glad to be on. Are you swinging for the fences? Are you dropping bunts? What's your strategy today? Uh, no, I just got uh, getting called up again from the minors. I'm just going to try to make a name for myself here. <laughs> All right, Brent Rooker. <laughs> um, right. uh, one might be a bunt saying, well, one might be a parlay bunt. You guys can make the call if it's even, even legal. Okay. It might so be gonna... like saying the sun's not going to come up. The sun will come up tomorrow. You know, I mean, technically, like you can that. you can make predictions like that. It's just people people tend to people tend to try and uphold the integrity of write that down until we get toward the end of the year, and then it just becomes a free for all. But here's how this is going to work: <laughs> we're going to start off three trips around the room. Jeff in Arkansas, followed by Judd, followed by Declan, followed by me, Phil Mackey, and then we'll do it two more times. So, uh, Jeff, why don't you start us off here? Write it down. You like writing things down. First prediction. Okay, the first prediction is your Minnesota Twins. And my Minnesota Twins will not extend their 19-game losing playoff streak this year. So does that? Okay. So that that could win in one of two ways. They could either correct. They could either break the streak or they could or, not make the playoffs. Correct. Right. Okay. That's fair. Well, okay. I, can see that. I like Write it down. That. You like writing things down. <laughs> All right, Jeff, I like that a lot. <clears throat> Neither Jared Culver or Josh Okogie will be with the Wolves when next season begins. Jared oh. Culver and Okogie will both be elsewhere when next season begins. Man, epic, epic whiffs if that happens. I mean, by the way, maybe some advice to the Wolves front office. Like, if a guy can't shoot at all, just maybe stay away in the first round. Just maybe maybe get some guys in 2021, 22 that can have shoot Have them hoist the more three-pointers, Phil. That's uh. the key. Just have them hoist the threes. <laughs> yep. All right, Declan, your first prediction. Write it right, down. Ma- you like writing things down. It's Masters week. It's WrestleMania weekend. There's a lot of things I could possibly. I, I had to limit myself. I could have done like like multiple predictions, but I'll just do one for each. So I'll start with the Masters one. The winner of the oh, Masters. Hold on, hold on. Actually, hold on. Since oh, yep, I, yep. I'm there with you, Thank but you. let's just make it official here. Okay. Appreciate it. The winner of the Masters will shoot no lower than 12 under par. So the winner of the Masters will shoot no lower than 12 under par. Since Keep in Jim, mind, last year, yeah, Dustin Johnson Jim, set 20 under par. Yeah. And the majority of them have shot, you know, 15, 16. So I'm, I'm going to say it's going to be a tougher course this year, and the winner will only shoot will, will shoot no lower than 12 under par. Wait a second, though. You're not saying anything. You're saying that the winning score will be <laughs> be- 12 under or better. Am I saying that? <laughs> right? I meant the other way around. I meant the other way around. <laughs> You're not saying so, anything. No, no. So no higher than twelve under par. <laughs> well, what are you trying to say? Are you trying the to winner say, will be twelve under or or less than like or eleven, worse. ten, nine, descending from that? Got it. Okay. Because because I was I was gonna come in and be like just for Judd who didn't probably didn't watch the Masters like the winning score was twenty under in November. Yeah, no. I watched the Masters. I watched the Masters. I watched I, the majors. I tinkered with it because I was like, wait, it's is the it weekly would stuff. it be higher or would it be lower? So that's where I was struggling to figure out. Even I, I had okay. to write this down numerous times because there is, with golf, it's the only sport where you want the lower score. So I was trying to figure out how to word that appropriately. Right. No, I, but, I hear. I thought you were trying to go for the like oh, super no, square no, 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 bunt no, no. there. And, and that's no, fine. Sure. Like You can bunt if you want to. So you're saying if the winning score is minus 13, then you don't get the I point. lose. Correct. That's No, honestly, then, that's a home run prediction, I think. Okay. I think I think wow. if you if you look at the okay. way that like look how good the golfers are. Phil's the win, riding the, the roller coaster. Win, <laughs> the winning score was twenty under par in November, and Declan is saying that the winning score is going to be eight strokes worse or more. And yeah. so I think if that happens, it's a it's home. Good. Run. Okay. Yeah. All right. <laughs> now that we got through that, Phil. Just want just want to make sure we get the phrasing right there. I want to make a master's prediction as well. Hello, friends and <laughs> colleagues. <laughs> It's always nice when the azaleas are in full bloom and the babbling brooks are trickling through the creeks of the masters at Augusta and putting hushed tones on every word. John Rahm will win the masters one week after the birth 
of his first child. That's right. John Rahm will win the Masters on right. CBS. Tony, back to you. <laughs> All right, Jeff in Texas. Okay, I got a two. I got a. I got a uh, two prediction parlay here. All right. Like it. Right. Hopefully, I lose. <laughs> Hopefully, this doesn't wow. come through. Okay. Have you ever made a bet hoping, you know, like you bet on the Vikings to lose? So oh, yeah. You, you do yeah. that all the time, Jeff. Yeah, yes, I do do all that all the time. Because I just have, you know, a streaming money just coming out of every place that I can just put down <laughs> on anything. Yeah. That's, that's great. Not, yeah. Yeah. It's, it's a, it's okay. a, I think it's a great way to just make sure that you feel, <laughs> you feel some positive emotion after a crushing Vikings loss. A little yeah. Financial they panic. still haven't won a Super Bowl, and I'm still not rich. But, um, <laughs> so the Timberwolves will not get Jalen Suggs, and the Vikings will not draft an offensive lineman in the first round. Okay. All right. I think the Vikings are drafting a cornerback now after the news that came down a couple days ago, but we'll see. Write that down. We'll see. I like it. All right, a little, little draft parlay for Jeff. Back to Judd Zilgad. Write it down. You like writing things down. Miguel Sano will play in 10 or more games at third base this season. Miguel Sano will end up playing in 10 or more games at third base this season for the Minnesota Twins. Interesting. Did Has he logged anything over there yet? to this point or has it just been a rise at third and Donaldson mm. for five seconds five. no he didn't even get to third base what are that's, you talking about right, right. He, did, he, did, he didn't he didn't even play it yeah he's the right. second batter of the year and he <laughs> got hurt right. he got hurt so he hasn't even logged an inning at third base yet no a rise was supposed to start in left field uh yeah Write I think down. he did you like writing things he, down he got I think he got into a game b- 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 earlier this week at third base for a while okay but so, it's going to be more than 10. Uh, so, so, so 10 total 10 for the season or more. 10 or more. 10 yeah. or more. All right, back to Declan. Write it All right, down. Twins you prediction like for me, too. Down? He is yet to hit a home run, so I will say by next week's Write That Down, Max Kepler will hit his first home run of the season. So right now, Kepler is hitting well, but no home runs yet. So I will say Max Kepler will hit his first home run by next week's Write That Down. That was the other thing about yesterday. They decided to hold Polanco at third in extra innings, and it's Max Kepler against a nasty lefty, right? I think was the next batter. Yeah. So I don't know, just uh, a little more awareness from third base coach there would have been. Write it down. You like writing things down. All right, write this down. Declan and I, by the way, have the same type. We, we're going Masters, <laughs> Twins, and then WrestleMania okay. in, in, in that order. So my Twins prediction is that, and this might actually be a home run. You guys can tell me. Byron Buxton will avoid the injured list until at least June 1st. Byron Buxton will avoid the injured list until at least June 1st. Write it down. So he will go mm-hmm. two solid months with so then, landing on and the then injured he'll, list. And then he will <laughs> land I know on it's it. not an actual home run, but it kind of feels that way. It would be a huge win sure. if he could go. So wait, so if, if, he, if he goes the entire year and does not go on, and I, I know this is a stretch, on that list, do you get the point then? Yeah, I'm saying he won't. He he will avoid the injured list for the first two months of the season until he, okay. until June first. If he you goes, would get it, the, yeah, you would get the point. But if you said he didn't make the injured list all season, that would, be, in my opinion, that would be a home run. Yeah. If you if if you said it all season, okay. but no, he'd get the point. It wouldn't be a home run though. Gotcha. Yeah, cool. like if he hits the injured list on June second, I still get the point. Yep, and maybe mm-hmm. next week, maybe I'll well, I'll see how he <laughs> feels physically the rest of the week, and then maybe I'll make that full season prediction. Write that down. Although those walls aren't going anywhere. So, uh, all right, back to Jeff in Arkansas. Your last prediction, sir. Yeah. So this prediction is is in the spirit of one of the rules that should be that should have been implemented. But write that down. <laughs> that something has to come off the board the next week that you all voted down, which the you. Listeners should have had another hit last you know, I, year. I, 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 am, I am not completely opposed to that rule, and I think it should be up for consideration for next season. I, I don't think the league was ready to implement that this year. We just weren't. We're like Major League Baseball. You know, we need to test some things yeah. out in the minor leagues first, <laughs> and then you know maybe see how the crowd reacts. But up for consideration. There was so much next stuff year. that came off the board at the beginning of the year that you guys just whipped through it. You had your podcast. You had to get it over with. But so. In the spirit of the Masters, John Rahm is not winning the Masters. 
Jordan Spieth is winning the Masters this year again. Oh, there it is. He's back. All man. right. He's yeah, back. He, he's my pick, I think, too. Jordan Spieth. He's yeah. a good one. I think he'll choke. He, you, uh, well, <laughs> he's never done that before. Yeah, no, I'm, I, that, that's an unfortunate part of him. Yeah, the pressure I mean, he's, to him. He's, he's, I, I think he's, he won the tournament last week, and then he blew one like three weeks ago. Like yeah. He's dialed in right now for the most part. Yeah. Dialed in, baby. Do. Until he sees the azaleas and he chokes on them. Yeah. <laughs> I've got too much pollen in my lungs. I couldn't win. <laughs> the pollen got the speed. Coming up next, 60 Minutes, right here on CBS. <laughs> After the Masters. All right, Jeff in Arkansas, formerly Jeff in Texas. Since you've got this platform now, <laughs> is there anyone in your life you'd like to thank that got you here? No, you guys got me here. You guys are great, and I appreciate it. Anytime you need a, anytime you need somebody to jump on, let me know. Listen, Love I think you, I think the three of us Love are going to take some sh- uh, joint vacation in a few weeks, and we might just have you solo everything if that works. <laughs> no, here's what. No, 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 no. I do have a great idea for you guys. <laughs> Let's hear it. What's the What's the sincerest form of flattery? Imitation, right? Yes, I think you should have a segment once a week. For the best oh. Randy and Cottage Grove imitators, <laughs> as uh, they like to say. Yeah, could we could we just get like a lineup of an anonymous faces on the YouTube channel, and everyone is trying their best Randy and Cottage Grove? Down yes. That. Now, okay, tell, be honest. I know you're not going to be honest, but he's a bit right. Listen, we have no idea. He calls our show. Yeah. He knows our phone number. He knows our hotline. Okay, and, uh, so he's not. You so guys we, can set him up. We interact. You oh, know, no. if however he lives his life away from our show is a mystery. Uh, he's built up a thousand followers on Twitter at Randy Vikes sixty nine, and so if anybody, if if there's a backstory there that we don't know and someone can uncover it, then by all no, means. No, I meant like he's not one of your. He's not a, some character you guys created and have call in like like um, Gerb Schmidt. You I mean, know, listen, on the other who's stage. Gerbschmidt? Oh, okay. I'm sorry. I didn't mean to bring it up, but the the jock itch thing was so hilarious. Uh, it's Tinia that, Kuris is the official yeah, medical term. Or what, yeah, whatever okay. that one. Yeah, yeah, he didn't call for a was, month after that. He's a he's a survivor. As that as was they so say. funny. Yeah, that was so funny. So well, okay. some people some people All thought right. that it was Brian Murphy from the Pioneer Press. You know, formerly the Pioneer really? Press. And then other people, I think other people thought that it was like Manny doing because Manny has a deep voice. Uh, yeah, I can, okay. So, but uh, no, it's 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 not. I can assure you of that. But uh, yeah, maybe someone can do some Dateline NBC investigative reporting. And, and actually, that might not be a good idea, just based on what I think Randy's. Well, he might end up on that show are. regardless. <laughs> yeah, I think he will. Hey, Hello, what I'm is Chris Manny Hansen. doing? What's Manny doing? So Manny is producing a couple uh, weekend shows for us and doing some behind the scenes work here. Um, so, but right, like the only, the only just for, for Jeff and for the audience, the only three full-time score employees right now are the three guys right here that you see. And maybe at some point we can build it back. So, well, I hope so. Yeah. Yeah. So, I miss you guys. I got to listen to, I still have to listen to Texas radio. <laughs> well, <laughs> well, they have we about nine sports that. stations. So, yeah. they, well, no, they've scaled down too. They only have two. Okay. Their ESPN station canceled. So the ESPN that the ESPN station owned the ticket and ESPN, and they just moved everybody over to the ticket. So ESPN in Dallas is just 100 percent ESPN. So there's only two sports shows there. Well, we appreciate you supporting us, Jeff in Arkansas. We got to get the rest of our predictions, and we'll get you back on again at some point. We'll probably talk to Jeff on on Ventline. Um, Where are we at here, Judd Zulgad? Your final prediction, sir. Dateline on our guy would be good. Oh. Keith like Morrison, uh, Randy and Cottage, uh, Randy and Cottage Grove went for a walk <laughs> and he never came home. Yeah. <laughs> was it? Was it one of his ex-wives? It looks like the Grim Reaper selected Randy and Cottage Grove at pick number one. <laughs> Cottage, co- Cottage Grove, Minnesota, a sleepy little town <laughs> where like no one would now? expect murder. <laughs> Only there was. Um, all right. So my final, <laughs> write that down. <clears throat> Please fire up the master's music. Oh, man. Oh. Love me, some, love me some uh, excessive master's music. 
Well, do you want this master's music or do you want like the it's no, moving no, no. day? It's no, moving no. day. No, Jordan, no, no. Jordan Spieth. Can he catch the... John Rahm? Looking to yet. avenge failure from shots. years past. John Rahm, whose it's wife just coming. had a kid and he's getting no sleep at all. It's Will all he... coming up next at the Master. CBS presents the Masters. Okay, yeah, give me the slow stuff. All right, here it comes. Because this is going to be a solemn. This is going to be a solemn. Write that down. Okay. Because while the Masters returns with the Isaiahs in April, what they don't have back is multiple time champion Tiger Woods, who I don't know where he is right now, but I bet he has two casts on his legs. Cool. There will be, write this down, there will be something at the Masters to honor. Tiger Woods, either by a player, players plural, or tournament organizers. And I'm talking about like they'll all wear red like they did right after he got injured on a Sunday. But there will be some show of of honor for Tiger Woods this weekend at the Masters. Tiger sitting in a full body cast at whatever mansion he lives in. Do we know where he is? Like, is he in a rehab? He, no, he's back home. He tweeted yesterday because Dustin Johnson was the host of the Masters dinner because he won the Masters oh, sure. last year. Sure. So you get to like pick your menu for everybody and stuff. And Tiger tweeted out some barb like re- was really looking forward to running DJ's tab up at the you know the Masters dinner this year, but it's gonna have to wait till next year. Some I don't know if he has some PR person just being lighthearted while he sits there just in tears or what his deal is, but. Yeah, apparently. The, so they had information like TMZ reported that they won't they're going to they're going to they're gonna withhold how he they know how he crashed and what yeah, happened. But and they out, won't of release pri- it. out of privacy, they're going to not release it. Yeah, it's, I mean, it was very odd. It's very mm. odd. Mm-hmm. Interesting. All right, Declan, your final prediction. All right. Final one. WrestleMania parlay for item parlay <laughs> for WrestleMania. <laughs> so this is a shot. I think Write if it happens. Down. You like writing things down? Yeah, if, at pretty much any four item parlay yeah. is a home run. Yeah. All right, four item parlay involving the four major championships. Bianca Belair will win the SmackDown Women's title. Rhea Ripley wins the Raw Women's title. Drew McIntyre wins the WWE title, but Roman Reigns retains the Universal title. Okay. So Bianca Belair wins SmackDown, Ray Ripley wins Raw, Drew McIntyre wins WWE title, but Roman Reigns retains the Universal title at WrestleMania. So I have a prediction that might throw a wrench into your predictions. Write it down. You like writing things down. Okay. Okay. I'm going to yep. make my prediction, and then you can you can digest how it may impact your predictions. All right. Write, write this down. Either Brock Lesnar or John Cena will return at WrestleMania. I don't know in what capacity. I don't know if they will get involved in a title match in some form, if they will be some sort of like surprised special guest referee or something, but either John Cena or Brock Lesnar will make a return at WrestleMania yep. this week. It's a two night yep. WrestleMania, Judd Zolgad. Yeah. What? Wait, what? No, they did it last year. This is the right thing to do. No, this is the right thing to do. They did this last year. Okay. They did it with because of the coronavirus last year. But this is an event that is basically almost five to six hours in recent years. Okay. Split this up into two and a half chunks. Why is it so sure. long? Like, because it used to be a, spe- I mean, it's their Super Bowl. It's their spectacle. But it, it, it got so, me and James Murphy did a watch along here the last, like at, when it was at full strength in 2019 before <laughs> the world went to crap. Yeah. And there was moments where you were like, well, dude. This is like six hours long. We're not doing a watch along for every single match. We do have to take a break. So I, I think it's the right move doing it two two parts. But I also think it's it's mostly a dud card. This is a dud card of WrestleMania. That's why they need Brock Lesnar or John. So it's Cena a Super Bowl, but it sucks. Pleasure. Yeah, it's, it's yeah, it's their Super Bowl, but yeah, it 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 stinks. The card's awful. <laughs> the card's awful in my yeah, opinion. Yeah, it would be like okay. if there's there's really like no Hall of Fame quarterbacks. Like I'm trying to think of a Super Bowl matchup that would just be like ah whatever like. Like if, if if like Matt Stafford and the Rams wound up playing like uh, I don't know like the backup like Matt Moore whoever the backup quarterback is for the Chiefs or something it's just not very exciting. What's the cost for it? Oh, there. I mean, it's at Raymond James Stadium, so they were supposed to do it there last year too. Yeah, uh, I bet a ticket runs well over. Triple no, digits. no, I. But what do, do you mean? No, I'm. Is there a pay per view? Oh, to it? Uh, if you have Peacock, which you are a subscriber to Peacock, I believe Judd Zolgad. Yes, you're all good. Oh, really? Okay, free. so they're not charging you. Okay. Mm-hmm. 
Mm-hmm. Yeah, you can I watch. It might you, be a pay per view. You, you can watch it on Peacock with us and live tweet throughout the entire weekend. It'll be no, I'm, I'm busy. It'll be great. Okay, <laughs> so I'm busy. I'll, I'll be watching the Masters. <laughs> it's the Masters to you. I'll be watching replays of the Masters. Masters. All right, so those write are your. Down. You like writing things down. Write that down. Sizzler. Predictions for the week here. Uh, by the way, write that down. Presented by PXG Minneapolis. All right, if you're a golfer out there, it's a golfer's paradise at PXG Minneapolis. The new Gen 4 golf clubs are here. Drivers, fairways, hybrids, irons, PXG's flagship clubs. They also have the 0211 clubs, a full line of high-performance clubs packed with PXG technology, priced a little bit more within reach. And if you want to look sharp, whether you're swinging those incredible clubs or you're just out and about, the PXG Spring Summer Apparel has arrived in store. PXG Minneapolis in Southdale Center and find out more at pxg.com slash Minneapolis. All right, Judd still leading the way, 455 average. Everybody else is just chasing Judd all the time and write that down. Don't forget, write that down, football-centric predictions on Purple Daily every Wednesday, and you can find everything we do at Score North on the Score North app and scorenorth.com. We'll catch you guys for a little reckless speculation Thursday tomorrow.